Whenever there is a social movement for a change going on, it is always met with opposition. As we see change in front of our eyes, it is important to know where the movement's roots lie. My name is Lydia Wurzbond, and today I'm going to talk about the long suffrage movement and how these women exhausted all of their options. These women resorted to militant actions after they long exhausted all of their moderate moves. So today I'll first give a historical overview of the movement, and second, I'll describe reactions to the movement's communication strategies. The suffrage movement contains important ties to what we are experiencing right now in the world, so it is important for everyone to know what these ladies went through. By the time that the ratification of the 19th Amendment came, almost all of the women that got the ball rolling died before they could see it come to fruition. The first push for women's suffrage was at the 1848 Seneca Falls Convention in Seneca Falls, New York. This convention was led by Elizabeth Cady Stanton. The convention was advertised as a convention to discuss the social, civil, and religious condition and the rights of women. After Stanton got the idea out into the minds of others, many women came out and expressed their support. Even though many men and women would come out to support, there were equally, if not more, men and women in their opposition. Despite all efforts to find a peaceful, common middle ground, only violence pursued. Now that I've given this overview of the movement, I'll talk about the reactions to different suffrage communication strategies. Originally, it was the dramatic tactics of the militant wing of the British suffrage movement used by Emmeline Pankhurst that influenced the movement in the U.S. In Britain, they destroyed the contents of mailboxes, they smashed windows, they cut telephone wires, they burned down the houses of politicians and prominent members of society, and they even went so far as to place bombs in St. Paul's Cathedral, Westminster Abbey, and near the Bank of England. Harriet Stanton Blatch, who was the daughter of Elizabeth Cady Stanton, returned to the U.S. after many years in England, where she associated with some suffrage group in the early stages of their militancy. In 1916, Alice Paul and Lucy Burns formed the National Women's Party. This was a militant group that focused on the passage of the National Suffrage Amendment. One of their most prominent instances was on March 3, 1913. This was the day before Woodrow Wilson's inauguration in Washington, D.C. There was an organized suffrage parade down Pennsylvania Avenue. This march began at the Peace Monument near the Capitol, passed along the White House, and ended with a rally at Memorial Hill. There were over 5,000 women that marched for suffrage, but their peaceful march was dis was disrupted by a mass of people that completely defied the Washington police. This meant that officers were simply standing by while women got beat and injured, all while they were trying to exercise their constitutional right. After this, women took a hard stand and were constantly picketing outside of the White House base. This was unheard of. Many of the signs were taking direct aim at Wilson and using his quotes against him. Everything would start fine, but many days during the lunch hour, employees that were mostly always men would come outside and congregate around the picketers. They would see these signs and one thing would lead to another and men would attack the women and the messages were torn off of their stakes, all because they really just didn't like what were on there. Due to the fact that many opposed these women using militant strategies, one would suspect that some peaceful demonstration would go over well. This was not the case. Some of the important strategies that were used included the use of handing out leaflets, circulating newspapers, soapboxing on the street corners, and simply marching down crowded streets. At this time, they decided it would be important to have an oral performance that would create a connection between the audience and a speaker. The performances, for example, could be something like soapboxing. During this time, soapboxing was always done by men. So having a woman do it was just not done. So when they would go on soapbox, they would bring suffrage flags, buttons, and flyers to further communicate their message out to the people. These women could be heckled at, spit on, had things thrown at them, and even so much as getting pulled off of their boxes. All of this happened when a woman was just simply trying to soapbox on the side of a street. Now that you have heard what I have to say, I hope that you will remember that no matter what these women did, by the time the ratification came down, 72 years had passed since the first Seneca Falls Convention, where they had started their fight for their democratic right to vote. Today, I talked about the historical context of the movement and how whether their tactics were peaceful or militant, it was only met with malice and violence from the other side.